Last week, Peter Hitchens had some advice to young Brits. Abandon your post! Please save for your lives! Of course, he's been saying this for years, but young Conservatives were generally able to laugh it off so long as progressives incurred small but important failures, for example the government's race report, and the economy was in rude, albeit precarious, health. Now, by contrast, the economy is one health scare away from third world territory. It's already mid-summer, we're dreading winter energy prices and can barely afford council tax, let alone a one-way ticket, to Peter Hitchens' supposed utopia. His reluctance even to hint at an alternative country is revealing. It demonstrates his ignorance of what should be his natural constituency. The surge in small-c think tanks like the New Culture Forum, the trickle of more impressive MPs like Miriam Cates, the recent National Conservatism Conference, and the proliferation of online reactionaries, all amounts to a rearguard action against the hyper-liberal zeitgeist that sees Britain as nothing more than an economic zone. Those involved in these cells are rather more inclined to view Hitchens' advice as the Roman Catholic Church views suicide, an act not ours to make. We love our country. It's precisely because we see it suffering that we feel duty-bound to remain on the ship. If it sinks, we have no desire to be the rats jumping off it, and that's even if we could. In other words, we may not win nobly, but we refuse to die ignobly. Hitchens doesn't seem to understand that. The result, paradoxically, is that his advice could only be directed at the sort of atomised liberal globetrotter with whom he has nothing in common. Young Conservatives are the last people who feel at liberty to swan off abroad, We are, to use David Goodhart's distinction, somewheres, not anywheres. The people most likely to treat Britain as just another viable place in which to eat, sleep and work are metropolitan liberals for whom feelings of loyalty and patriotism are psychological fossils. Hitchens' advice contains the unpleasant odour of cowardice, and his refusal to identify where the grass might be greener, a cop-out. Hence the comparisons to Denethor, steward of Gondor. In fact, the comparison is much more incisive than any meme could possibly suggest. The third age in which the Lord of the Rings takes place is one of former glory. It's an age known otherwise as the Fading Years. The elves emigrate in drips and drabs to the undying lands. The dwarves subsist in a miasma of nostalgia, and men, personified by Aragorn, are dispossessed of all that they were and might be, and don't especially want to be what they have a right to be, in Aragorn's case, king. Thus, during the Battle of Pelennor Fields, Minas Tirith, presided over by Denethor, is really a microcosm of the decline, and as he sees it, the inevitable fall, of civilization itself. In our own context, the elves are the upper classes who prefer some British holdout in Spain to living cheek by jowl with rapacious foreign adventurers. The dwarves are blue-collar workers post-Thatcher, and of course Denethor is Peter Hitchens. But at least Denethor had the excuse of dying before he could witness the charge of the Rohirrim. Peter Hitchens has had plenty of exposure to young people who think like him, and yet he clings obstinately to the self-fulfilling delusion of being alone in the world. A cynical interpretation would be that he knows all this, but, like his brother Christopher, is much too stubborn to concede it. I fear the more accurate interpretation is that he's grown comfortable in his role as the supposedly hated Peter Hitchens, and doesn't actually want any allies. I suppose it would come as a shock to any obituarist to discover that the subject of his craft is far from dead in remission. But let's go along with his advice for a moment and see what happens. A young, Christian, small-c conservative, patriotic Englishman, myself, for instance, decides to abandon his country. Where shall I go? Poland and Hungary are, for all their faults, possible options, but then I don't speak Polish or Hungarian and don't especially want to put in the effort. There's always France, if France weren't on fire. Italy is beautiful, but has no jobs. Australia has jobs and speaks English, but like so many of my generation, I haven't yet had the money to take driving lessons, and in a country about as big as America, this is likely to prove a handicap. I suppose I could always try my luck in America, but while the Biden administration is quite happy to let half of Mexico saunter over the southern border, it remains rather strict with everyone else. Floating over all these tabula rasa considerations is the fact that everyone I love lives in England. I'd also add, as others have already pointed out, that few countries remain untouched by the forces of technocratic globalism and moral and social decline. Denethor was pitiable, but not entirely contemptible. (laughs) 
He was still grieving Boromir when the apparently unassailable might of Sauron came knocking at his door. His suicide was intelligible. But in counselling a sort of moral suicide on the part of young conservatives, Hitchens is both unintelligible and contemptible. Also hypocritical. There's nothing salutary in running away from a lost cause, and yet Hitchens is always the first to stick up for lost causes, whether that be drugs or grammar schools. He's within his rights to think our cause a lost one. What he's not entitled to do, by his own logic, is think less of it on that account. Pressed to explain, he surrenders the obligation to do so and falls back on the I'm just a messenger shtick. He claims to have no interest in the temporal, he cares only for the eternal, for the kingdom of God is not of this world. True, but I've always thought it poor theology to imagine that Christ's return would fail to inaugurate the transfiguration of all things, such that God's glory will fill all of creation like a burning bush, and all manner of things shall be well, and the lion will lay down with the lamb, and so on. In other words, Christians aren't exempt from endeavouring to improve their temporal situation. If God saw that it was good, and the word was made flesh, that is, earthly, it follows that the world itself is an arena of potential goodness. That involves politics. The simple fact that Hitchens bothers to research, write and publish books on lost causes would suggest that he thinks the dog's bark has yet some bite in it. If the dog gets put down by a fifth booster jab or is overwhelmed by an influx of cats, so be it. I rather like dogs. <laughs>